Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading. Welcome to Traders Corner, our weekly warts and all trading show. As always, we're joined by Garth McKenzie, who is founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi. Uh, not so very warty at all. In fact, you walked in looking quite flush. <laughs> uh, so let's start off with uh, the trade that has um, certainly benefited the portfolio greatly in the last week, and that was the short on the RAND. Yes, that's right. Um, we identified this trade at the end of last year and said, watch out during the holiday period. Um, this may very well be the trade that we do for the first show of 2014. And that certainly was the case. It's a, it's a trade on the Rand dollar, and I did it using a currency future. The chart of the Rand dollar exchange rate is up on the screen at the moment. And this, this is basically the trading action mm. through 2013 and into the beginning of this year. And what you can see is there's a very steady weakening trend there. That trend actually goes back quite a lot further. It goes back about two and a half years you know, prior to this chart as well. Uh, and then we, what we had identified was that there was this big overhead resistance area, 10 Rand 50. And you can see the currency had bumped up against that level a number of times. And I said at the time that if it starts to break out through 1050, then the likelihood is that it's going to probably accelerate weaker. And then we'd, we'd see a, a potential trade to be done. So that, that certainly was the case. Uh, I put a short Rand dollar trade on on the 31st of December last year. Uh, so I guess sneaking one day before <laughs> the... Uh, very thin <laughs> trade, I imagine. Maybe <laughs> most of the market makers and brokers were half asleep. Uh. Yeah, it was only a half day trade as well on the 31st of December. Anyway, I used that opportunity to put a short Rand trade on. And I, I went short when the spot price was 10 Rand 47. And I used a currency future, a, a March currency future. That price at the, at the time on the currency future was 10 Rand 60. Wow. Um, and then it broke out through 10.50 as I'd expected it to do and we've seen it moving sharply weaker during January. Another interesting thing is that, you know, the RAND always does weaken, well not always, but out of the last 12 years it's weakened by an average of 6% in the month of January on 10 out of the last 12 years. Now this month we've had it move weaker now by about 7% for the month to date. So I figured it's done more or less the average move mm. that you typically get. It got to my target price of 11 and just beyond. Uh, I decided to close this trade out at 11 Rand 13 eventually. And that allowed us to lock in a profit of 13,340 Rand on this on this Rand short. Fantastic. In fact, um, why I said last week initially um, is because all the action really happened has happened in the last week. Um, and w when did you cut this out? Was it um, Friday? Uh, it or was, was it? on Friday, I think, yeah. last week. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and in fact, we did see the Rand blow out again to 1125 uh, at one stage yesterday then it pulled back and it's pulled right back so it is pretty volatile at the yeah. moment yeah. so are you happy with that um, and where you cut it um, at that point I am happy you know I had a strategy in mind and, and we stuck to the strategy um, our risk to reward ratio here worked out quite nicely on this trade mm -hmm. uh, you know it could go weaker from here I don't really know the, the rand is often a funny animal to trade and it can sometimes blow out more than you would expect it to. Mm. Whether that happens now or not, I don't know. I mean, obviously there is a bit of an aversion around emerging markets at the moment, and we have been caught up in that somewhat. So there's a possibility that maybe the RAND does still go weaker. But I think right now there's a lot of noise around the fact that the RAND is very weak. And what you often find is that the, the noise is the loudest at the extremes. So I think I'm happy for, for now. Mm. But what I do want to take a look at, having said that, is look at this long-term chart of the RAND. And this might scare you. I think if you're sitting at home, in, you better sit down. But, <laughs> Have a, uh, just drink at the ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, but look at this chart. Now, this is the RAND dollar exchange rate. It goes back to 1997. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, the, the, I was still a young boy in school back then and, and only starting to take an interest in the stock market. But anyway, having said that, look at this triangle pattern that we've got on the Rand dollar exchange rate over here. And what's interesting is that notice we've started to break out through the top of that pattern. And I've seen quite a few analysts now starting to talk about this. And that potentially is very bearish break for the Rand. Mm. Uh, the move through 10 Rand 50 basically validated that triangle structure. And if you're really strict on the technicals, you actually take the, the broadest point of that triangle and you project that distance upwards. Mm, it gives you a long-term target of 18 Rand to the dollar. Um, now, I'm not saying that that's going to necessarily plan out, but if, if we stick strictly to the technicals, that's what it's saying. When, and uh, when you talk about long term, I mean, how long term are you Well, it could be a number suggesting? of years, you know, it could be a number of years before it gets there. But the fact is that that 
you know, unless we start coming back inside that triangle and making that a failed break, then this it otherwise looks quite bearish to me. I think there's a possibility that at some stage we come back to 10 Rand 50, but that might be the opportunity then to put another Rand short on. So I certainly will be watching this. It's quite a scary thought. Yeah. You know? I can see it, it our overseas actually. holidays going out the window <laughs> with, this, <laughs> with this trade. <laughs> we'll be playing sort of, you know, slides or um, watching your iPad for lovely photos of boating down the yeah, Rhine or exactly, something. Or ski slopes somewhere. Yeah. Thanks, Garth. Mm -hmm. That really does make me feel a lot better about <laughs> things. Um, okay, so th that is the potential that you might look at to uh, short the rand again if it gets back to the 10.50 level. Um, let's talk about the the most recent trade and that would be the trade that you're going to put on this week which is once again a short and it's quite interesting for you because you're normally on the long side of things this yeah. is I've never seen so many short positions in the yeah portfolio. that's right I mean, last week we did that put spread option structure which is a bearish structure giving us participation on the downside and, and this week I'm doing a short on the top 40 as well so yeah it does look as if I'm sort of turning a bit bearish for now look I, th I think our market is long overdue a bit of a correction so mm. that's what the thinking is here um, later in the year, no doubt, we'll put some more long trades on. But right now, I, I struggle to be too bullish on our market as things stand. I'd, I'd prefer to be edged or, uh, you know, placed slightly on the short side of things at the moment. Yeah. This chart is the top 40 uh, graph. It goes back to 2009. Basically, includes this entire bull market that we've seen over mm -hmm. the last five years. And you can see the uptrend that I've drawn in there very clearly, how it joins all those low points. Uh, we've also got our 200 day moving average, which is the, the light blue line on that chart. Um, we've got long term uptrend support that comes in at around about 37,500 to 38,000, that sort of area. Now, keep in mind that our top 40 at the moment is trading about 41,000. It's been as high as 42,500 mm. recently. So you know, for us to get back down there, that would imply that we'd need to see around about a 10% correction from the recent highs mm. and that really is not it's um, not a, it's it's, not a it's, huge it's, thing no it's not a huge actually. thing it, it, it happens in bull markets you often will get 10 mm. or 15 percent corrections and i think we long overdue one so that's kind of the way i'm positioning myself at the moment what i want to now do though is just take a look at the more recent trading action and now this chart only it shows the last three months worth of trading action on the top 40 spot index okay. Uh, and, and what's very, very interesting to note here is, first of all, see that there's that overhead resistance there that we bumped up against last week. Yeah. And we actually broke slightly through it and then failed and came back down. Now, that candlestick pattern that we saw there on Thursday of last week, that's what we call a shooting star pattern, where it make, makes a long uh, tail to the upside on the candlestick formation. What it basically implies is that at some point during the day, the market was relatively high, and then sellers came in and pushed the price lower towards the close of the day. And that is a ve invariably, it indicates some sort of a reversal, mm. it indicates that the sellers have actually taken the upper hand in this battle. Uh, in, in this situation. What's also interesting to note is that that shooting star candle actually happened on a fairly large volume. Mm. In fact, that was the highest volume day of the year hmm. for 2014 so far. So what it suggested to me was that there was probably some short covering, maybe a bit of capitulation on the part of some short positions. At the same time, there was some fairly aggressive selling as well at the higher levels. Nonetheless, we've started to come down from there uh, and we've actually broken that short term uptrend that goes back to the beginning of to the middle of December. So I took this as an opportunity to go short on the top 40 future, um, the March top 40 future in this case, and I've done one contract okay. with the, at a price of 42,270. Remember that each point on these futures represents 10 Rand. So that effectively means that I've got a short position with 422,000 rands worth of exposure mm. on at the moment. My stop loss is 4, uh, 42,800, so that's 530 points above where I went in. Okay, and so that gives you a fair amount of leeway. It gives me a fair amount of leeway. Also, that stop loss would be above the highest point of that shooting star candle that I'd identified there. Okay, so Garth, in greater mechanics then, uh, take us through this trade. All right, so it's the March 2014 Aussie 40 contract that I'm shorting here. I've done that at 42,270. My stop loss is 42,800. My risk per contract is 530 points, which equates to 5,300 Rand. That is more or less 2% of the value of our trading account at the moment. I'm looking for a move down here to 38,500. Okay. 
uh, and that would mean my risk to reward ratio on this trade is 1 to 7,1. So Which is pretty a, high. Yeah, it's quite a healthy risk to reward ratio. And I think I'll, I'll probably need to hold this for a while. It's not going to get there next week, I don't think. I think this is a trade we could potentially sit on for a little while. Guys, now, um, as I mentioned, and as you, uh, as you talked about, uh, we put that put spread option, um, uh, which is a longer term short, effectively, of the market. So what's the thinking between having two short positions? Is this to take advantage of um, a short, sharp pullback um, in, in the, um, I suppose, in the next couple of weeks or so? And the other um, trade that you put on is, is for a sort of longer term yeah. hedge ag against the market downturn. Yeah. Maybe you could just talk us through this. Yeah, well, look, the, the put spread structure that I did expires in June. So that gives me six months worth of participation. This is a, a future that expires in March. Um, they, they're kind of different trades, but in, in effect viewing the market in the same way. Remember that that put spread option structure was very close to self-funding, meaning that it cost me practically yep. nothing to put it on. Uh, and this, this trade, I've got, it's a directional trade, it's got a stop loss, I've got 5,300 Rand worth of risk on this trade. Um, but in, a, in, a, in essence, I mean, they're both kind of trying to achieve the same thing. This one. Yes, th this future expires in March, so I suppose you could say this is a shorter term trade than what the other one is. Yeah, okay, so it's very interesting, as I said, to have three short positions effectively for the first trades of 2014. Yeah, yeah. Might tell us a little bit about the direction of the year. Mm. Um, and on that note, let's uh, see what the portfolio is doing. Well, it's looking very good. We're up 9.9% .9 for the year to date. There's mm. our currency futures trade that we've banked 13,000 Rand profit on. Our options structure, with we've paid a premium of 854 Rand. And now this top 40 future, I did that trade on Friday morning. And uh, ah, this good is, move. yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it was the, the day after that shooting star yes. candle ident that I identified. And that is now 1,200 points in the money as well. So we're up 12,000 Rand wow. on that trade. So so net net, we are yeah, sitting close to 275,000 Rand. It's nearly 25,000 Rand to the good and it's not even the end of January yet. I oh know, it's fantastic. Now, I suppose the, 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 the thing is, it's, it's, it's great to start off like this because you feel like you've got money in the kitty. Um, it, it gives you a little bit more leeway. But I suppose the other um, risk here is that it introduces a certain uh, cockiness and, mm -hmm. and over, um, I suppose... Um, uh, Over-exuberance. Over-exuberance, <laughs> I'm searching for yeah, that word. Look, that's the risk. And, and I think that's the key with trading. You need to try and remain even keeled all the time and stick to the rules. Um, remember last year we had the opposite of this. We started the year on a very weak note and it, it took me till about April or May to even move into positive territory. Mm. Now that was the opposite where the potential was to get very depressed and down in the dumps, um, which is also not a good thing for your trading. But at the same time, if you do have a really good run, you do need to be careful of becoming overconfident and too cocky because that also can tend to be a factor that makes you want to throw away the rule book and become a little bit too, you know, gung-ho. So we're always very disciplined on this show. We stick to the, our knitting in terms of the proper trading principles that we preach. So I'm not going to do anything stupid. Uh, oh, good. You know, we've got money in the bank here and I'm not about to go and become a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful news. <laughs> it's very zen of you, Garth. Um, all right, Garth, so uh, um, upcoming courses, you've got a couple? Yes, all right. First of all, I've got a face-to-face -face session this week, Thursday, on the 30th of January. Yep. That's a live interactive session. People can go onto my website, traderscorner.co.za, to book for that. It'll be great. I'm going to be discussing trading in 2014 and the strategies that we think will work in 2014, given that it's probably going to be quite a difficult, choppy year mm. to trade. So I think it's going to be a really interesting session. Myself and my colleague Andrew Todd will be uh, hosting that. And um, then we've got a CFD course on the 6th of February and then a number of high probability trading courses after that in February and March. If you'd like to attend any of these, you're welcome to email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za and I'll send you the details. Okay. The famous Andrew Todd, also sometimes the elusive Andrew Todd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Garth, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for joining us and uh, good luck with the shorts, I suppose, Thanks. for the next couple of weeks. That is Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Trader's Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading.